All right, let's keep this rolling. I know a lot of this is review, but I just want to refresh your memory since it's been a while since we've done this. So let's talk about graphs and tables. So we're mainly going to focus on going from a graph to a table and completing it. So we've completed tables before, but now this time it doesn't have anything on it. We got to put the labels, we got to put all the numbers, etc. But you can do this. So let's jump right in. So this graph below shows the relationship between the distance someone hikes in a given amount of time. So you can see that we got hiking distance, we got a certain amount of time in hours, distance in miles. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to label our different quantities that we're talking about, so our units, right? And we typically want to start with the x on the top. Not that it always has to be on top, um, but we just typically start with the x and then we do the y. So like if this was a vertical table, we would usually have x on the left and then y on the right. Not always, but a lot of times. So with that being said, our x, right, because we got x labeled here, it's always the one that's on the bottom, the horizontal, left and right, is time. So we're going to go ahead and put time, and I put h in parentheses because it's measured in hours. So go ahead and fill in your table. And then we do the y, which is distance, the vertical line here, so distance in miles. So I'm going to also put distance in parentheses miles. We really want to use time and distance. Even though they're measured in hours and miles, those would be like our labels, but the quantities, the things we're actually talking about are distance and time. So we have time on top, distance on bottom. Okay, so then we really just need to follow the points on our graph to then create our table, right? That's using the ordered pairs. Now, I know a lot of times we don't look at this because the dot's not on there, but a lot of times we want to start with the origin if it goes through the origin. Not all of them will, but because we're talking about proportional relationships, this one will. So we actually want to start with 0, 0 here. I know there's not a dot on it, but that is what we want to start with in this case. So we're going to do 0, 0 at the beginning. So at 0 hours, the um, hiker has walked 0 distance. Makes sense. Okay. Then we look just at our points, right? We're not looking at anything else right now. We're just looking at these points. So at 5 hours, okay, so I'm going to put 5 in for my time because I'm looking at this point right here. Okay, if I look across... Oh, I, I actually am counting by twos as we go up here, okay, um, because if I look in between where the four and the eight are, is, I have to think, well, what's halfway between four and eight? And that would be six. So it would be five, six. Okay, so the distance is, or I'm sorry, the time is five hours. The distance would be six miles. Okay, so then we do the next one. We And keep in mind, right, this should be proportional. So we should be able to see a connection as we move across. So it kind of makes sense that, um, you know, we end up with zero, zero, but then once we start moving, we move a certain amount, right? So anywho, we've got 10 hours for the next dot here, the next point. And when I look, it's at 12 miles. Okay, it makes sense, right? Because if I take 6 times 2, it gives me 12. 5 times 2 also gives me 10 there. So we're doing the same thing to both numbers. Okay, our last one, we have 15 for the hours. And then we got to think between 16 and 20 is going to be 18. Okay, so again, makes sense, because if I do 6 times 3, I get 18, 5 times 3 gets me 15. Okay, so I just went off the points here. All right, so you've got one more problem to try, and then you're going to get a signature from that, so go ahead and give it a go. If you need to go back and look at something, feel free, but otherwise, move on forward.